ilipo na jia jia ambayo inaidua wario chini jina ambalo linatengeneza jia katika bahari na shabu tunakuinua mfalme wa adabu maana utaweza kutengeneza jia katika maisha yetu utaweza kutengeneza jia katika familia yetu maisha yetu hayatabaki kuwa vile tena katika jina la Yesu Kristo mfalme wa wafalme tunakuinua tunakuheshimu tunakupa sifa jehova roho wa Mungu tawala vizazi hadi vizazi zinakufahamu ya kwamba wewe ni Mungu na hakuna aliye kama wewe jehova hata sisi Bwana tunakufahamu na tunajua ya kwamba hakuna mwingine kama wewe. Hakika vizazi hadi vizazi zinakufahamu ya kwamba wewe ni Mungu wa kweli na hakuna aliye kama wewe. Hakuna wakuringanishwa na wewe katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Oh. Uliye Mungu wa kale na uliye Mungu wa leo kazi zako zaonyesha huku wa kale umetukuka umeinuliwa ewe bwana vizazi hadi vizazi ya kufahamu wewe uliye Mungu wa kale na uliye Mungu wa leo kazi zako zaonyesha huku wa kawewe umetukuka umeinuliwa ewe bwana himba visa Hadi vizazi ya kufahamu wewe Uliye Mungu wa kale na uliye Mungu wa leo kazi zako zaonyesha huku vizazi vya kufahamu wewe uliye Mungu wa kale na uliye Mungu wa leo kazi zako zaonyesha huku wa Fika utukufu wewe 
tunakuinua Jehovah tunakuheshimu jioni ya leo tunaalika roho mtakatifu mahara hapa akanene na mioyo yetu katika jina la Yesu Kristo hakuna mwingine aliye kama wewe Jehovah hakuna kama wewe wewe ni Mungu wa kweli hakika hakuna aliye kama wewe wewe ni Mungu na utabaki kuwa milele hautabadilika kama Jehova utabaki kuwa Mungu wewe ni Mungu na utabaki kuwa milele bwana wewe ni Mungu mikono yako mbele za Bwana jioni ya leo katika jina la Yesu tunapoenda kujitayarisha kuanza mikutano yetu siku ya leo mbea Bwana akaweze kunena na moyo wako katika jina la Yesu Kristo mwana wa Mungu aliye mbea Bwana akaweze kukunenea ambea Bwana akanene na moyo wako ambea Bwana ibada sisi roho wa Bwana akaweze kutawala ibada hizi roho wa Mungu akachukue nafasi yake katika jina la Yesu Kristo Bwana ni wewe tunakuinua Bwana ni wewe tunakutukuza Bwana ni wewe tunalinua jina lako wewe ni alfa na omega wewe ni mwanzo ambao una mwisho Bwana ibada hizi tunashiweka mikono ni mwako tunatangaza neema yako tunatangaza wesa wako tunaomba mkono wako Bwana na roho wako mtakatifu Bwana akatuongoze Bwana akaondumia mioyo yetu katika jina la Yesu tunakuabudu Bwana na tunakuinua kwa maana wewe unastahili na ni kwa jina la Yesu tunaomba na tunashukuru Haleluya Bwana Yesu asifiwe Tushangilie kama watu ambao tunatarajia ufufuo kutoka kwa Bwana katika jina la Yesu Yesha kata ya rabagana Yesha kata ya rabagana 
Shakata yara maganda. Hallelujah. Kuna nguvu za ufufio na nitauliza achas. Tafadhali msongeshe watu this side. Ndio wale watu watakuja wapate nafasi za kukaa hiyo. Kwa hivyo nitaomba hao watu wako this side wote. Kindly we can uh, just as vitu kwanza ziko this side. Pia kwa sababu tuweze kujipanga vizuri. Na wale viongozi ambao tuko pale tunaweza kaa huku mbele. Ndio tuweze tusonge huku. Hii side kwanza tutakaa kama watu watakuwa wameja. Ndio tuweze kuwa pamoja. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Si tumchangilia bwana asikofu kwa kati ya nyumba. Alera celebrate our mom also is she's in the house in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Asante, asante, asante. Sasa wale watakuja acha as you make sure kwanza fiti za kwanza zimejaswa you at least at uweze kukaa kimpango na neema ya Bwana itakuwa pamoja nazi praise the name of the lord basi bila kuchukua wakati mwingine nataka tukaweze kumwalika mchungaji wetu our pastor mam pastor lucy to come and continue from that point let us appreciate our mama anapokuja katika jina la Yesu hallelujah Hallelujah. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. We are in revival time. Salimia jirani yako mwambie it's revival time. It's revival time. We have to be revived in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Nashukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya kila mmoja wenu ambaye tumeweza kufika kwenye kanisa siku ya leo a wonderful time to be in the presence of God to come in the times of refreshing these are the times of refreshing wakati wa kuhuishwa bwana yesu asifiwe na mungu hawezi kutukusanyisha buri bwana yesu asifiwe i thank god this evening because of his mercies and his loving kindness he has kept me he has protected me the fight uh, the, 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 the what has been there I thank God because he's faithful. He's on for me and no one can be against me in the name of Jesus. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. The Bible says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. The name of the Lord be glorified because if God is for us, who can be against us? No one, no devil, no hell shall be against us. In the name of Jesus Christ. And this is why this night, tumesema tutakuja beleza buwana kwa sababu tunamuhitaji. We had him yesterday. We had him the, uh, the past days. We had him in the past years. But this year, we will say, we are saying, the Lord God Almighty, we need you again. We need you because we cannot have enough of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in the book of uh, Psalms 85, that uh, will you uh, 85 verse 6 will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you hallelujah Amen. God is interested in us yes. and that is why he has to visit us another time so open up your heart open up your spirit fungua moyo wako fungua nafsi yako na uyambie moyo wangu tulia ukae ndani ya bwana na uketi dani ya bwana chini ya bwana ukapate kutoka kwenye meza yake i know god has prepared great things for us and uh, we are privileged bwana yesu asifiwe i don't want to take time because our time is good I want to uh, acknowledge the honor that we have had uh, this evening or this year or this week that um, bishop ponda is together with us all the way from uh, Rwanda. Now, 
amesema atakuja so that we can we can partake from the table of the Lord Bwana Yesu asifiwe so i would like us as the bible says whoever received a servant uh, as a servant from the Lord shall receive the prophet's reward Bwana Yesu asifiwe hata yeye akibarikiwa na sisi if we receive him we shall be blessed Bwana Yesu asifiwe so open up your heart and tell your soul relax before the Lord and partake from his table because it is prepared so without taking more time i would like you to help me welcome the servant of god on the altar to come and continue Praise the Lord. Amen. I greet you all in Jesus' name. I think we can take our seats in Jesus' name. I thank God so much for keeping you safe for giving you grace to continue. Uh, the last time I was here, that was 2019, I think. It's been now three years. Uh, since then, up to today, many things have happened, bad and good. But we thank God that he has preserved us. He has preserved you and has preserved me. On the other side, he deserves all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Again, uh, I want to say, Pore sana kwa yale yote yale yopata, wakati ule mbao uh, baba wa nyumba hiya lipo pere kwa nyumbani. Wana sifiwe sana. Uh, ikawa haiku kuwa wakati rahisi kwenu na tunaelewa vyote lakini kwa neema yake mungu bado umesimama nasema mungu wabariki sana mungu wabariki sana secondly I want to thank mom so much thank you so much for standing uh, it wasn't easy for you, for the family, but because of his grace, you are still standing. Thank you for standing. And God bless you so much. <clears throat> Thank you, pastors and elders, because mom cannot stand alone. He needs I mean, she needed you and the whole church to stand. Umefanya kazi mzuri, munga wabariki. Naleta salamu kutoka nyumbani kwa mama, mke wangu, watoto na kanisa pia. Munga wabariki mkipokea salamu zao, wako salama, na wanajua niko hapa. Uh, Nimekuwa huko Tanzania nikifanya kazi ya mungu na fikiri Kiswahili kimeongezeka kiasi. <laughs> Wana sifiwe sana. So nitakuwa natoka kwa Kiswahili na ingia kwa kingereza hivyo hivyo tu. Uh, mimi ni bado yule yule. Na wapenda sana. Uh, bado na mpenda yesu. Wana sifiwe. Uh, the last time I was here, we were standing somewhere there, looking there. Now, things are changing. This is 2023. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the place is more beautiful and spacious. God bless you so much. Thank you for doing the work of God. Now that we are coming to... Uh -huh, what are we doing? going to do? Redigging and repossessing. Hallelujah. 
Are you ready to redeek and to, to repossess? Wow. God bless you so much. Uh, I, have, uh, I have to just surrender my spirit to the Lord that he will use me according to his own will because he knows the need more than I do. So I have messages I've written down and I was saying, asking God, what do you want me to say? Yes, redigging uh, the wells, that's the theme, but you need a message for uh, the life that is present here. Praise the Lord. So today I'm going to begin, yes, uh, I will do an introduction, but because we are together for the whole week, I believe without any drop of doubt that you are going to be blessed and you're going to redig your, your, your wells and repossess them in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Now in Genesis 26 verse 1, <clears throat> yeah, give us Genesis 26 verse 1, then I will bring... Uh, in ancient times, the well was both symbolically and often literally located at the center of the community. From the well, the community drew water. It was the basis of sustenance for life. The well represented all the social resources for the community that were necessary to endure and thrive. In the New Testament, now when, where we are going to switch, Jesus promises a well or a river that can never dry, and that is the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Uh, a well is a sign or a symbol of divine provision. Divine provision. These people lived in wilderness. Their country was just desert. Desert. And a well is not just, you cannot just make a well. It is divine. It is symbolized divine provision. Praise the Lord. The well cannot be there if, there is, if it has no springs that bring water into it. So in this week, I'll be taking us through uh, what I call divine provision. When we talk of redigging and repossessing tonight I want to say do it again arise and do it again arise and do it again it's not a miracle well it was dark in, in the past something happened but now time has come to redig it's arise and do it again praise the Lord so for tonight, I want us to go to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Then I bring the message. Now, tomorrow we'll continue. If you are going to do it again, there are things you need. There are things you need to do to understand and to do. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land of you to the land which I'm giving to them, the children 
of Israel. Mm -hmm. Every press that the sole of your foot will trade upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, or the land of the Hittite, and to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun. Mm -hmm. Be strong and of good courage. For to these people, you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I saw to their fathers to give them. Mm. Only be strong. It is repeated. Only be strong. When we are going to redig our wells, only be strong. And we want to know who is saying that. Only be strong. And very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Mm. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, for then, you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Father, I want to thank you for your word. Bless it. It is in Jesus' name. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come down and let the understanding of this word be in us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Inampenda mungu sana. God is always faithful. Hallelujah. Now the situation of Israel and Joshua who is being told, I wanted to relate it to the situation you went through when the father of this house, my friend, was called home. Hallelujah. So what happened to you, it was new to you, but not new to God. It had happened some time to other people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage this church. The man of God went when we had agreements and when he went, they remained. And we keep, we keep. And we shall keep on them. Hallelujah. When Moses was called home, the whole nation had a big challenge. Joshua was only known as a helper of Moses. Hallelujah. So, the whole nation of Israel got confused and was like asking themselves, is this going to be the end of our journey? Because from the beginning, God spoke to them through Moses and that Moses is going to take them to the land. He did not say of any other person, but Moses. Hallelujah. Now Moses is called home. There were many elders there. Praise the Lord. Caleb was there. Was there. Joshua was there. And the others. So there was a challenge asking themselves, what is the way forward? 
from here they were mourning of their father spiritual father great leader the man they witnessed being used of god hallelujah hakuna mwingine walikuwa wameshaiona akitumiwa na mungu kama musa was the only man they knew that had the vision and had the power and had the anointing praise the lord but what i want to say tonight i want to tell you church my friend my people mom as a pastor and all the pastors and elders arise and do it again bwana yesu asifiwe arise and do it again why because the man that god called and gave a vision was called home but the vision was not called home hallelujah god is still behind the purpose and the vision of this church Point number one, man can die, but the purpose of God will never die. No matter who leaves you, no matter who hates you, and no matter who fights you because of the delays of purpose, the purpose will remain for his glory. I want us to understand from now from the transition imagine three years now we are transitioning hallelujah from that past time we are getting into a new season as a church where we are repossessing and redigging our wells We are getting back to the plan of God. We are getting reconnected to the purpose of God for our lives. Hallelujah. We need to be careful how we are reconnecting. Hallelujah. How we are digging the wells. Number one, you must understand that the purpose remains. No matter what happens the purpose of God remains for this church. Hallelujah. Don't dig other well that God uh, that God is not within. By the way, the time of Isaac he dug a, a physical well, but this time we are digging or digging our spiritual wells. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Now, when people are still in that mood, God comes and visits Joshua. And says, "Joshua, I know my servant Moses is dead." Wanna see feel? Now, I want you to get into this visit God visiting this man and he says yes Joshua don't be worried and don't be confused I know my servant died but my purpose has not died it is still stands so Joshua arise and do it again arise and take this people for sure hallelujah i will you are the one who is going to divide the land to these people as their inheritance when i used to see for son so if whatever happens church leaders members of the body of christ We are living in a very confused world 
everything that people can, I mean, it is very cheap today or very easy today. Somebody to wake up and say, today I am the pastor, today I am an apostle, today I am bishop. And it, it will be accepted because it is man-made and you are doing it. But it doesn't mean that God will have to work with you. Praise the Lord. We cannot manipulate God. And we cannot use God. Hallelujah. No man can use God. It is God who uses man. Praise the Lord. It is God who chose men and puts them in responsibility not to do it by their own, but God is going to do it through them. So, I want us to know that the dream, the vision, hallelujah, that God gave to this man, hallelujah, it is not dead. We must be careful when we are redigging the wells of this ministry not to dig or to redig a different well, but to keep the wells. It is a divine provision in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God is just. Hallelujah. I have seen the years I've been walking with him, I've been working with him. I have seen God. Sometimes you need to wait upon him because when you rush, hallelujah, you may run alone. And as a I see God is going to do great things, you are going somewhere. In the name of Jesus. So God comes and visits and have a conversation with Joshua. My servant is dead. But my purpose is not dead. I knew I will come back to this church, but I did not know when and how. But in my spirit, I knew because I saw the purpose of God on this altar. Hallelujah. Now I thank God that I'm back. <laughs> we are going to push this. Hallelujah. To another level. God is faithful. You can also die. But the purpose of God will not die. It will continue. It will continue. God is just. God is faithful. Hallelujah. So God comes and tells him, no, don't keep mourning. Don't continue mourning. It is time to rise and repossess. Repossess. Rise. Continue the journey. Hallelujah. I still have the plan. The Israelites were saying now, we know what is ahead of us. We know the Canaanites. We know there is a river Jordan. We can see it. We need God. Who used Moses to perform miracles. You remember I'm talking about divine provision. God is going to provide for you mama. God is going to provide for this ministry. And nothing you shall lack. Everything that is needed for the vision to be accomplished. God is going to provide. In Jesus name. We are redicting our wells and repossessing in Jesus' name. Who else God is going to use? It was a question in their minds. 
How shall we cross this Jordan? How shall we stand before the Hittites? The Jebusites? The Canaanites? Remember, they had sent spies. And they came back with report. And they said, many there, when we saw them, and we looked at ourselves, we looked like grasshoppers. They are giants. Now, in the dilemma, the man they trusted is gone. But I want to tell you, no matter who has gone, the purpose remained. God comes and comforts Joshua and tells him, Joshua, my purpose, my plan to give you the land, it is still alive in me, it must be alive in you. Arise! And do it again. Do whatever you used to do. Go back. Hallelujah. Go back. There are things that I will talk about tomorrow, not today. Go back. Now see it. Pick it. And go. Now, when he was there wondering how will I be able to do this, God assured him that the way I was with Moses, I will be with you. Come on. I want to bring something here. When God says, the way I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You must learn many things here. You also need to know that the way Moses was with God, so you must be. Hallelujah. It's not just believe God will do it. You must go back and know the well Moses dug Hallelujah. Then redig it. Pick up the call. Pick up the mandate. Then when you pick it up again, the way God used to be with Moses, so shall he be with you. So the next point is when you are redigging the wells and the repossessing, you must understand first what happened, where did I stop, and what happened that I must redig. They are those things the Philistines came and filled. Hallelujah. The wells with the earth, the, earth, the dust. What does it feel? When something happens to stop you moving forward, now the devil has a chance to come and fill the wells with dust. Some of us, we need a change of mind. There are things that entered your mind that spoiled and darkened and filled your well. Now we are not going to dig wells down there. We are redigging spiritual wells. Oh, bana sifuwe sana. Bana yesu sifuwe sana. We are redigging our spiritual wells. We need to go back to the former passion Former love, former commitment, whatever has destroyed it, you must redig it in yourself. Tunaelewana hapo. Bwana sifuwe sana. Unajua wakati mwingine sisi wahubiri tume angukia mtego wa kupenda na kutaka kufurahisha wanadamu 
lakini kuwafurahisha kwa maneno ambayo Mungu hatayatimiza kwao bora ni kuambie neno ambalo litakuwa na uchungu lakini hilo hilo Mungu ako nyuma yake kilichukua Mungu atakuwa na wewe Bwana sifiwe sana. Bwana pewe sifa. So, you need to examine yourself. What happened to me when this happened? How is my passion? How is my commitment? How is my you 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 compare your current spiritual well kwa pamoja Hallelujah The way you used to pray the way you used to do ministry the way you used to commit yourself the love you had the passion you had is it still the same Redeek and repossess Now God is telling Joshua Just stop mourning. Put away frustrations. Don't be discouraged. Arise. I will walk with you. Praise the Lord. Now, in this journey, when we are redigging, we need the presence of God. We need to walk with the presence of God. God promised Joshua that the way I was with Moses, so I shall be with you. Hallelujah. I shall be with you. It is all about the purpose of God, not the personality. And the purpose of God attracts his presence. Bwana sifiwe. Bwana sifiwe. The purpose of God calls for someone who will only believe and trust in him. It is about the purpose and it is not about the personality in the human mind we want to see the personality but god sees the purpose when god is going to walk with you he does not look at what you can he does not look at what you know but God only looks or is focused on what he can do through you. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Mungu atangalia kile anachotaka kufanya na maisha yako, si kile we unaweza kufanya. Hallelujah. Therefore, God comes and tells Joshua hata kama wewe hujisikie unaweza it is not about what you can do it is about what i can do through you so arise arise and go take these people don't fear jordan don't fear those nations arise it is not about your personality it is about my purpose bwana sifiwe it is about my purpose. I think God is speaking to people here. Bwana sifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Arise in your mind. Arise in your thinking. Because it's not about you. It's about the purpose of God. And when you stand for the purpose of God, the purpose of God will attract his presence. 
verse 7, God tells Joshua, only be strong. Only be? Hallelujah. Only be strong and very courageous. Now, this is the second time God is telling Joshua, be strong. The second time he said, only be. <laughs> when something is repeated, why God is telling Joshua to be strong? Now I'm talking to mom, be strong. God is telling you, be strong. And don't really be strong. You will make it. This ministry is in your hands. And God through you. Hallelujah. God through you is going to do wonders. He's going to do wonders. Hallelujah. Just watch and see. We are here together. And I'm, I'm coming back. But God is going to do wonders through man. This woman you see here. Praise the Lord. God, it's not about your personality. It's about his purpose. It's not about what you can do. It is about what he's ready to do through you. Hallelujah. Allow me to encourage you tonight. I will preach you tomorrow. It is about what God intends to do through you. Through your life. Just surrender. Hallelujah. And pastors and elders and believers, Bwana Sifiwe, God calls one man and gives him a vision or a revelation. But he will mobilize as a man and women to stand with the man or a woman God has called to fulfill his purpose. I pray that you will be that man, you will be that woman that is going to be mobilized by God. Hallelujah! You know, yeah, the, the people can mobilize a following, but I have worked with God, my pastor. Listen to my testimony. When God mobilizes people, behind you. Nobody can stand before you. I pray for all people here that the Lord will mobilize you as you rebuild and repossess be it that you are mobilized by the Spirit of God. What I see, God is going to do wonders with this Woman of God. Hallelujah. You will not do like what he used to do. You are going to do great and great wonders in Jesus name. The grace of God is upon your life. But God says Joshua be When you accept to walk with the presence of God, what is required of you is one, to be strong and be courageous. Hallelujah. Sometimes God will walk with you, hallelujah, and he will take you through situations that are terrifying that you cannot stand by yourself. So you need to be strong and courageous. And know that he is with you. Hallelujah. Joshua. You need to be strong. Because it's not easy. For you to re take up. Redeem this well. Hallelujah. Unajua, hawa watu, 
kuna wakati walisema Musa mm 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 tumechoka na njaa iko vibaya sana nataka kurudi kwetu huko ndio kwetu wacha turudi huko and they only experienced divine provision through the hand of Moses they had never seen it to with Joshua let me prophesy whatever you have not seen god is going to make your eyes see it and is going to use the hands of the person you did not expect praise the lord these people when moses went to be with the lord they said now where will we find divine provision with whose hand hallelujah with whose hand joshua you have never performed any miracle people will not understand you and he told him be strong hallelujah the way i was with moses so i will be with you but be strong be strong deliverance santon be strong be strong be strong be strong in jesus name i say again be strong let me say this sometimes we are comforted by seeing people around us and they can they can at least help us feel able to move on hallelujah i have come to tell you that sometimes you need to depend on divine provision 100% bana sifiwe you need to be strong because you need to be strong and courageous to walk with the presence of god simply because it's not about what you can do but what god can do through you now I pray that you just say God with this hand of mine. Hallelujah. I redeem and repossess my spiritual wells in Jesus name. In Jesus name. We need now God commands Joshua only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you now i'm bringing a point here hallelujah god emphasized a point with joshua that things happens based on my relationship with you not based on the knowledge you had not what you know not based on what you can try and do not based on what you have seen in other places not what you have seen with other people but i do all things based on my personal relationship with you therefore we need stability in our relationship with god we are going to repossess we need he says joshua don't fear what people say don't fear how, how people view your strength just work out your relationship with me meditate the book of the law read it day and night that to strengthen my relationship with you and this is what is going to give you power to repossess and retake your wealth in Jesus name we need stability in our relationship with god as our priority than our relationship with men sometimes we struggle to keep people around us please let them go 
Whoever wants to do what? To go, let him. Asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Tunawapenda watu. Lakini, if you are not aligning your life with the purpose, please, let go. Why? We must re restrain, I mean, strengthen our relationship with God. Let it be our priority simply because only God can walk with you all through, but not men. Man is limited. He can promise you heaven today and tomorrow gives you hell. Aha. Uh -huh. If you have not seen it, I have seen it. People can promise you heaven, yet they don't have it. Before the, uh, the day ends, they only give you hell. People may even promise you and they love you completely, surely, but they are limited as human beings. There are levels when you get there, they cannot walk through with you. Only God who can walk all through with you. So, work out, re-strengthen, re -dig the well of your spiritual relationship with God. Re-dig. Re -dig. Re -dig. What was it? Taking the dust out of it. Taking the dust out of it. What kind of the dust in a situation? Remove it. Remove it. Take the dust out from the well of your relationship with God. From the well of your commitment to God. From the well of your passion for the ministry. Remove the dust. Remove the dust. Strengthen your relationship with God in Jesus' name. Go in, no matter how difficult it is for you. For you are taking the possession not by your strength, not by your power, but by the presence of God. Rise and go in. Go in. Go in. Because it, is diff it might be difficult, but God has not called us to go in by our own strength. It's not by power, nor by might. It is by the Spirit of God. So as we repossess and redig our our wells. Number one, you need to know the purpose has not changed. The reason of your being in this church has not changed. Wanasifiwe has not changed. Things will change, people will change, but the purpose will remain. Stand up for the purpose. Renew your relationship with God. Remove the dust. Mambo mengi yanatendeka jambo likitokea. Mambo yanafanyika mabaya. Ninajua, I know what I'm talking about. In the spiritual realm. Oh, this week, don't Miss. Hallelujah. Don't miss. Hallelujah. Don't miss. Don't miss. God is going to take us higher to another realm. Trust in the purpose of God. Remove the dust.
Remove the dust. Revisit your passion. Revisit your commitment. Revisit your relationship with God. And remove the dust. Hallelujah. And remove the dust. Fear not. For you are going to make it. It's not about your personality. It is about the purpose of God. Hallelujah. When Isaac went down there because of a famine that had taken place, he went to redig the wells of his father. This was just laying the foundation. Let us remove the dust from our relationship with God. Let us remove the dust from our passion and our love for God. That is the work of the enemy. Oh, that is the work of the enemy to fill our wells with dust. Many things have taken place in our lives, but this is the week that God has set for us because he loves us so much. He wants us back. We are taking back our blessings. We are taking back our possession in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now give me, give me, give me Isaiah 54 as I come to the conclusion. I want to give you another three things then we close. I want, we want to pray. God is going to do great things here. I see. Chapter 54, Isaiah chapter 54. Sing, O barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with a child. For more are the children of the desert than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Enlarge the prince of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stead. For you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabitant. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame, for you will forget the shame of your youth and do not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. For your maker, continue, for your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth in Jesus' name. Now, God sent Isaiah. It is the same chapter where we have the promise that no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Now, it doesn't say that no weapon shall be fashioned. Weapons shall be fashioned against you. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the promise says, none of them shall prosper. Now, God sends Isaiah to the people who have lived in uh, captivity for many years. 
and saying, Sing! Sing! Oh, barren woman, sing! Wanasifiwe, sing! Now, he compared that church as a barren woman. Wanasifiwe. A barren woman is a woman who has a husband and they are well, but whatever they do, they cannot produce. Shetana meweka mchanga mejaza. We are digging. <laughs> Bwana sifuwe sana. Again, I may say, ma, uh, he has said he has uh, uh, likened this church uh, of that time as a widow woman. Widow woman is a, a woman who had a, a husband, but then the husband died. Now, God is telling her, sing! Oh, you are going to be remarried. Wana <laughs> sifiwe. Now sometimes God speaks to us words and we don't understand them. And he's telling these people to sing before they see why they should sing. Wana sifiwe. And then he compared this church as a desolate woman or a desolate city. Somebody who was abandoned for one reason or another. He said, no, sing. It is the Lord who has said. Sing. Begin to rejoice. You are going to have many children. And now, after singing, he gives a responsibility. Enlarge. Your tents. Uh huh. Do what? We are digging our wells and we are repossessing. So enlarge. There is work. I think I will come back to that. But what I want to close with is that God spoke to these people. When God speaks, listen to me. When God speaks, He speaks from the place of authority and power. We hear him from our place of weakness and failure. But he speaks from the place of his ability, not our ability. That's what I love for God. He speaks, he sends his word from his place of his ability. And when he says, I am going to return you, I am going to bring you back to me, He's speaking from the press of his power and his authority. Not from my power, not from my ability, but from his ability. God is going to do great things. When God is telling Joshua to arise and take these people, he's not uh, depending on his skills, his experience, but he's telling Joshua, only you need to be strong. Courageous because it is not about you, it's about to me and the purpose. The life that has not been productive, hear the, the, the word of God tonight. Sin, be ready to be productive again. Be ready to be productive. Wherever I, I mean, I mean in any way that the devil has brought you, now be ready for the Lord is coming with divine provision. Are you listening? Be ready. Hallelujah. And begin to rejoice for what God is about to do in your life. In areas of your life that has not been productive, you felt desolate. You felt abandoned. I tell you tonight, in the name of Jesus, the word of God is saying, prepare for the joy. Prepare for the joy. Prepare for composition of new songs. For the Lord is coming to do great things with that life that has been hopeless, but because the purpose of God is not yet dead, is still alive. He is going to come regardless of where you are, 
regardless of who is with you, regardless of who abandoned you, regardless of who hated you, God is coming to do great things through you and with your life. Only be strong. Now, what is, what is needed here? When God says, remember he's speaking from the place of his authority. Not your authority. He's speaking from the place of his ability. Not from the place of your ability. Alright? Now, what is, what is required of you? Number one, he's telling you, change your mind. Change your mind. Change your mind. Begin to see things happening. Change your mind. The way you think about yourself, change it. That's how we are going to redig our wells. Now we are redigging our wells that are from within us. Redig your well by changing the way you think about yourself. Now begin to think about yourself the way God thinks about yourself. You burn a woman, sing for your children are going to be many. Hey! How? By which means? It's not your business. In fact, what I have learned, hallelujah, hallelujah, what I have learned, God has not uh, allowed us to know how. He only allowed us to know what he will do, but he will not allow us to know how he will do it. How remains his glory. Hallelujah. How remains his portion. But what? In every situation, we must know what God is able to do. Though we don't know how. Because how is not ours. Therefore, change the way you think. There are things of God you will not see until you change your mind. Until you change the way you see things. You pray and pray and fast and pray and fast and God say, please, I still wait for you to change the way you see things. To change the way you think. Hallelujah. That is removing the dust. You know, do you know that every carnal thought is compared to the dust? Hallelujah. Every carnal thought is equivalent to dust because it comes from the dust. These carnal kind of philosophies are dust that has broke our spiritual wells. We are redigging our wells. The church is dying in America. It's already died in Europe. Now the death of the church is now coming to Africa. Things are different. People are getting they are now I, I don't know what it, how to put it the church is sick but we must redig our wells. We are the remnants. Before before the church in Africa dies, I must die first. Yes? It's my commitment. I must die first. Let it die when I'm not here. But we are going to preach the word of God, the truth. Everybody in this, in this generation wants God to establish him here. Even if he's going to lose it there, but to be established here. That is dust. 
Let us remove dust from our spiritual wells. Praise the Lord. Number two, you must be comforted by what God is speaking to you. You have to be comforted by the word of God. Don't be discouraged by the situation and what is happening around you. Be ye comforted by what God says. When I see first time, God is speaking to this church that he has likened it with a barren woman. Be comforted by what God is saying to you. Rejoice. When you see people, what has happened, God has said. Why are you rejoicing? God has said. We see things are not happening. God has said. Rejoice. Be comforted. I speak to this child today. Be comforted by the word of God. Don't be discouraged by what has failed to work out. Be comforted by the word of God, by what God is about to do. Number three. Hallelujah. Number three. Let go of the past pain. Let go of the past pain. Receive and embrace the new well. Hallelujah. The divine provision is coming. Let go the past pain. Be in a position to receive divine provision. God is doing a new thing. And he promised no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And this is what this word means. Hallelujah. The enemy before he fashions a weapon he first studies your situation when he sees what you are going through, then he bases his, I mean, he fashions a weapon based on what you are going through. The weapon he fashions against me is different from the weapon he fashions against you. Praise the Lord. So, don't allow what you are going through, hallelujah, the devil is fashioning weapons based on what you are going through to attack you and to hit you with the same weapon. Now, in the same situation, be comforted by the word of God. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. When you learn to be comforted by the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are redigging our wells. We are redigging our wells. And we are repossessing our wells. And these are spiritual wells, which was the sign of divine provision. God is going to reopen divine provision for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Don't allow that situation because the enemy is able to fashion a weapon based on your situation. He's busy, but keep the promise. No matter what the devil fashions, it won't prosper. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you so much. With that introduction, let us meet tomorrow. Bana Yesu asifiwe.
Give me this last verse, Philippians 4.4. 4. Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord always. Wanapewe sifa. Rejoice in the Lord always. Always. And I will say it again, rejoice. Bwana sifiwe. It is time to shake off the dust from your wanapewe sifa and repossess and redig your wells. Aomba tusimam. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Just lift up your hands. I want to just make a prayer. And as I'm going to pray, I say to you, prepare to repossess your wells. In Jesus' name. It's not going to be in your power, in your strength or what. It is God who is saying. Thank you who proposed this theme. As we prepare ourselves to repossess, to redig, God is ready to reopen the springs of living waters. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Are you ready for it? Our part is to redig, but God's part is to reopen the springs of water. And your life is going to be watered divinely in Jesus' name. Every spirit, every the Bible says you will not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. And you will not remember of any shame. In the name of Jesus, God is going to reopen the springs of water in Jesus' name. As you lift up your hands, this is our prayer. Father, reopen, reopen the springs of divine provision. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for the new season, for this church, for the new season, for the new dimension. Lord, for the new dimension, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are taking this church into another dimension. In Jesus' name, where we are going to redeem and repossess the spiritual wealth in the mighty name of Jesus open your mouth and speak to the Lord I say now this church the pastors the pastors the pastors the members of this church we are going up into another dimension where we are going to repossess and to redig our wells in Jesus name and father you are opening the springs of divine water the divine refreshment in Jesus' name. Father, I release your power. I release your grace in Jesus' name. And what seems to be impossible with us, it is going to be possible with you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. For you speak from the power. You speak from the press of your power. From the press of your ability. From the press of your power. In the name of Jesus. Lord. 
Lord I'll release your word in this room in Jesus name and every weapon forged and fashioned against every believer and every church member I bring it down in Jesus name Father I thank you Father I worship your name this is just an opening in the beginning and the foundation of what you are going to do throughout the week in Jesus name receive all the glory and the honor in the mighty name of Jesus amen 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 Sing us, Almighty Father, to receive divine provision for this year and even for our lives. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Tunaweza kuja, tuweze kutoa, tuweze kutoa na tutabarikiwa katika jina la Yesu Christo. Bwana Yesu wa sifiwe. Bwana Yesu wa sifiwe. Kwa hivyo tukumbushane, wale abao hawaja kuja, tukaweze kuja katika... Uh, revival of Kesho na bado tunakutana kule kwa Alex